take whatever questions you might have. Um, you know, I think first of all, it's interesting to see a group that I met with not nearly a year ago, and you might recall at the time I was saying that um, uh, that I thought we we could balance the budget and cut taxes, and you probably all thought I couldn't do that. I mean, you thought, nice, that's good campaign rhetoric, but it can't be done. And the reason why I, I felt that we could do it is because we've done the preliminary work. Um, and I, I was confident we could get there. And some of it involved uh, cutting, uh, but a big chunk of it involved reform. For example, our Medicaid reform, you know, letting mom and dad stay at home and um, uh, be able to... Uh, to be more, I think more independent for sure, maybe even healthier, being at home, at a fifth of the cost. And as you all know, the thank you, the nursing home lobby had blocked that for many, many years, probably, well, decades for sure. And uh, by getting that done, it allowed us to save money and yet provide a better result, because that's what mom and dad want to do if they can. Uh, we also took 4% of the Medicaid population and we are trying to guide them into settings so they don't get primary care in the emergency room. 4% of our Medicaid population drives about 52% of the costs. So we've created this process, it's ongoing, to coordinate their care. So they get care, uh, but in a lower price and with a better outcome. Uh, you know, the options from that was like cut children's dental care, which I didn't want to do because, it, first of all, I don't agree with it, and I think there was other ways to do this. We are now engaging in a whole new round of, uh, of health care transformation, including the fact that we want to align ourselves with organizations that are asking providers to develop ways in which we can achieve better quality, not more quantity. Medicine, by and large, is a quantity-based, the more you treat, the more you get paid. That's not the way to do it. We want outcome-based medicine based on keeping people healthy rather than treating them when they get sick. We think this can help the state of Ohio begin to really get ahead of, of, of health care costs, and, which is all important in terms of job creation. Uh, my, the team is working with the a number of uh, entities to get this done. Greg Moody would be somebody, if you want to do follow-up, that uh, you could find out. But like, for example, I've talked to Jeff Immelt, the CEO of, of uh, General Electric, about this, and they're very interested in partnering with us. So that's good, and I've brought it up at the Cincinnati Business Group. They're the, you know, there's places around the state where they want to do this, so we could put our dollars next to them, I hope, that and create greater leverage. Um, sentencing reform, you know, that's one that uh, we put off forever. People afraid they were going to be accused of being soft on crime. But sticking 12,000 people in a prison for less than one year next to murderers and rapists is not my idea of good public policy. So Gary Moore, who came from the private sector, serves, uh, been in the public sector, you know, put these programs together. So we've reformed the sentencing, which was terrific, and we're going to divert a lot of people from these, from the state prison into a more community setting where the public will be safe and where these people can be reintegrated into the community. It begins to bend the curve on the cost of corrections, which is something nobody was able to figure out because they didn't want to stare this in the eye and figure it out. I mean, a lot of the problem we had in the state of Ohio is that people wanted to play politics, which is natural, instead of looking at a problem and trying to fix it. Once you do that, you get lost, you know, and you, you don't want to pick, uh, you don't want to pick, uh, you know, well, this is my friend, therefore I can't squeeze them or reform them. So we didn't do that. And you take on some decisions, you know, if people, you know, people want to demagogue an issue like that, they can, but so far it's been pretty good. Uh, in the last couple months, Gary Moore, and this is not a trend yet, he says that because he's reinstituted something called unit management, violence in our prisons is down about 50 percent, which is really fantastic. We um, said we were going to sell some prisons, uh, and where our idea there was you put the public prison next to the private prison, you share best practices, blah, blah, blah. We sold one because the tail on selling the others was, was not good. 
So, you know, privatization, just for the sake of privatization, is not something that I, that I sign up to. I mean, if, it, if, you, if you cannot get a good result, you hold off until you get a good result. Um, but we've privatized the operations in about three or four at a, at a cost savings. And Gary's able to meet his numbers, which we, you know, we're all concerned about. We've got to meet the numbers. Um, uh, construction reform. Here's a, a system that had been in place for 134 years. Multiple prime contractors drives up your costs. Uh, we thought for a while we might lose that. We didn't. We're down to a single prime. Should save a lot of money for our our public uh, institutions. Uh, Gordon Gee lobbied heavy on that. He's thrilled with the outcome. That's another example. We did raise the prevailing <coughs> wage, not a lot, but to some degree. We think that'll help uh, keeping costs down. Uh, but that hadn't been changed since 1994, and I'm told before that 1934 was when they had last messed around with that. Um, I like what we have done in K through 12 with 60,000 vouchers. Uh, that's, I don't know that anybody in the country has that. I'm still trying to find out. Take the lid off of charter schools. And get, we are now developing a system to give parents a look into how their schools are actually doing uh, based on how they stack up with their tests and performance. And uh, we have teacher evaluation in the budget bill, which, which where we have a teacher actually is on my staff now, and her job is to get around and figure out on teacher evaluation what's the best way to do it, uh, because I'm I am concerned about it, and it's you know it's going to be somewhat consistent with no chat with uh, race to the top because they have they have evaluation and merit pay. We don't have the merit pay in there. Um, we have it in five, but we didn't have it in the budget. And but race to the top, I think, has it for about half the school districts. If I'm, I, I think I'm right on that. Um, there are a whole bunch of other things in here: uh, shared services, doing things differently. And then not only did we get balanced, but we also cut taxes. So we killed the death tax. We believe that helps small business people, particularly farmers. We also uh, got the income tax down, kept it. Everybody thought it would go up, it didn't, it came down. And um, we also have a 10% tax credit for people who invest in small businesses. All that designed to, and, and what we are able to achieve by get, eliminating the structural deficit was sending a message to people in Ohio, but around the country, that we've got control of our finances. Standard and Poor's uh, who had us on negative watch improved our outlook. When everybody else was going down, ours went up. And, um, and we think the tax cuts are important, and I have to stress to you, this is not ideology. This is, uh, this is what I think. If you don't have low costs, you can't, get, you can't incubate business. So the, everything we're doing is driving towards that. Uh, the other thing we did was to privatize um, our... Uh, Privatize our um, yeah we don't have the um, we don't have the, the regions okay anyway um, here Rob I just need I, I don't even need this take take this um, the other uh, 